Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, so many times we look at things, <clears throat> how did it affect me? But Lord, many things affect you. And Lord, give us that understanding tonight to line up with your purposes. And we want to thank you that our hearts and minds are open by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you now for your truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, everybody has their pamphlets. I want you to see that. Look at the very top, Father in Eternity. Okay, Father in Eternity, the Father's original plan. Then you see on the far right, it'll be on your left, as you, yeah, on your right. Depends on how you're looking at it. Uh, you see the Father's Eternity. You know, when we first come to the Lord, it's all about me, it's all about us, and that's good, that's okay. And a lot of it, as we live our life down here, which is a very small time, of, it's called, Paul calls it a passing hour that we live down here. James says it's like a vapor. And for us that have lived long enough, we can say that's true. Um, uh, I keep saying it, I'm 83, and it's just like, wow, gone that quick. And I've been a Christian for 60 years. I just think I've been coming to prayer meeting and Wednesday night services for 60 years. <laughs> that didn't jar any of you. <laughs> That's a lot of Wednesday nights. <laughs> of, should I go? I'm so tired. I'm give up. I know what he's going to preach. I, you know, all the struggles you have. Anybody have any of those struggles? Yeah, every one of us do. So that's part of the program uh, because the, the, the flesh is tired. You've worked all day long, and, uh, and I understand all of that because I've been there uh, many a time. But I thank God that by the Holy Ghost I yield to him, and he gives me strength as he gives you strength. So I want us to get a, a better picture of what's going on in our lives. So many times we're captured in our little world. And we're all, we all have our little worlds. How many of you know that? What's going on in your world? If, if I had, uh, if we had time, I could call each person to come up. And, and if, if you're really honest and open, <laughs> you, to share your world. Every one of our worlds would be totally different. Okay? And so many times, that's all we are, can comprehend is our little world. And if I could just handle what's going on in my little world, that would be great. But yet God enlarges us to at some times to be able to come to that place that we can rule and reign in our little world first. Because you've got to get it straight first then God will begin to enlarge us to reach out into his world and see uh, his plan for the whole world, okay? So you may be just ca caught up in your little world tonight, and we understand that, and that's okay. Uh, God will leave you there for a while till you get it straight, where you're willing to step out of your fears and your anxieties and your concerns into the broader sense of being able to help other people in their worlds, okay? And that's the way I'm bringing it tonight. So this is a, a good illustration. Now I want you to look at the, the progress there. When, we are, when we're born in the natural, <clears throat> we know that, that we're lost because of Adam. No fault of our own. It's no fault of our own that we have become sinners, that we were born sinners. No, we were born sinners because we inherited that from Adam. We all agree to that, okay? All right, so we are basically God's creation, but, we're, but we come to this world in a lost state. And so God gets to us. You know, someone says, well, I found the, I found the Lord. No, you didn't. The Lord found you. <laughs> Every one of us was running as hard as we could. And God found us. I remember the day when I surrendered to Christ. I mean, it was like night and day. 
in my life. <clears throat> I walked that aisle <clears throat> and I received Christ and man, the light turned on and I stepped into a new world altogether and I began to function differently because I was different. I was born again by the Spirit of God. Let me say, we're not talking tonight. Everybody in here probably is, is saved tonight. So if you're saved, you can't get no more saver. <laughs> okay, settle that in your life. If you're ever going to come out and reach into other people's worlds to help them, you've got to settle that. I'm saved <clears throat> by the grace of God when you accepted Christ. That is settled. That is, you nail that down. That's it. You are God's child. You've been born again. Okay? Now, when you look at your little chart there that we have given you, we start out in, in, in creaturehood. We're a fallen race, and we get saved. We cross, we cross the valley through the cross, and we come over to what we call sonship. So the first scripture I want to put on the board tonight will be in, uh, in John 1.12. Put John 1.12 on the board, and let's sort of move along here and, uh, and get some clear understanding in our lives. Now, John is talking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He says, but to as many as did receive and welcome him. Now, when you read the scripture, stop right there. Ask yourself a question. Did I receive him and welcome him? Now, in your little world, settle that. Is it settled? Everybody here has received and welcomed him. That's Jesus. Raise your hand if you've done it. Let's see your hand. See, see it's good to get things nailed down. I like to nail things down. All right, so we have received him and welcomed him. Therefore, what did he do? When we did that, when we received Christ as our personal Savior and Lord, he gave us the authority and the power and the privilege and right to become the children of God. Someone may ask you, well, right, what right do you have for you to call yourself a Christian or a child of God. And how would you answer that? God gave you the privilege, the power, the authority to become his child. You got that? See, if you're out in the world, see, uh, you may still be in your world, I don't know, but if you ever, when, when you do break out like a, a little bitty in the egg, <laughs> so, see, some people are still, uh, how many love me tonight? <laughs> But some Christian people are still in, you know, they're pecking. They're trying to get out of their little world, you know. And that shell, shell is so hard. You know, you peck, 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 and it's just hard trying to get out. But once you do break out of your little world and the shell we're in, and we realize that other people have feelings and, and have ideas uh, other than us, we gosh, that's an opener. But see, God has given us now the privilege, look what it says, to become the children of God. That is to those who believe and heave to trust and rely on his name, and that's us. So it's settled, we're saved. Now, we've gone through the cross here, as you see this little thing, and I'm going through this roughly. And I want you to see where it says sonship there. So 1 John 1, 12, so we are now sons of God. All right, now, Turn to put uh, 1 John 3, 1 up there. Uh, uh, John was so set back when he thought about the love of God. I, I, I thought about what um, Darren said Sunday. Why is God so caught up with you and me? Why does he love you so much? What is it about you and me that, that he loved us so much that he would give his son to die on a cross for us? So here's what, here's what John, he said, he said, see what an incredible quality of love 
the Father has given, shown, bestowed on us that we should be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God. That's it. Period. I am a child of God. You are a child of God because we have received Christ as our personal Savior. <clears throat> but then you have to stop <coughs> and think, wow. It gets back what the psalmist says. What is man that God is so mindful of him? Now, let's stop and bring that down to our everyday life. If we're going to break out of that shell, see, we're saved. Just a lot of folks just in the shell now. We, we, got, to, we got to understand that, that God is drawing us to himself. You know, someone says, praise God, I'm out of the shell. I know, but you're just a little bitty. <laughs> Pick, 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 pick. Just a little bitty. And that's okay. We, you know, we were all little bitties. How many love little bitties? You know, it's fine. We all love little children. But how many of you know God's got a plan for all of us to grow up into the image of his beloved son, Jesus Christ? Now, that's a process. We're not talking about salvation, heaven, and hell here. If you're saved, you're saved. You can't get no more saver. God has justified us, sanctified us. Let's nail, nail that down. When the devil comes to you, try to trick you, you tell him, no, that's subtle. I am a child of God. That is nailed down in your life. Now, let's move this along a little bit. How, how many remember when your, ch your child was born? Everybody was excited about, about you. Oh, he's so cute. Looks just like his daddy. Or she looks just like mama. But I think it looked like grandma. No, it looked like... <laughs> but see, where do you see yourself on this journey? You've got to answer to yourself. Some of you have come a long ways and you're still in the faith. 60 years of, of toiling that Susan and me, she's, well, she's been saved since I think 70 years, something like that. But we've grown some. We understand some things now. We understand a little bit more about the Father's heart because we've had our children and one of the biggest things that we always wanted them to do was to grow up. Did you know that's what God wants us to do? Grow up? You may be six foot six and still be a baby. And that's okay, we're gonna love you. Nothing wrong with being a baby. But 60 years later, <laughs> Bob, are you still a baby? All right, I'm going slow. I'm going somewhere with this. So bear with me. But I want us to stop and think, are you still living in your little world or have you broke out of the shell and now you're living for the glory of God? You're not living for yourself. You're living for him. You've been saved for his benefit and not yours in one sense. Now you answer the question in your, in your own life. Okay, everyone has have to answer that and be honest about it. Now, God wants us to become something. He wants us to become mature Christians, growing up in him in all things. So we, as we move along here, now, in the scriptures, in fact, turn to, um, turn to, um, Revelation 5, 11. Start with there. I'm sorry, Hebrews 5, 11. Hebrews 5, 11. Put that on the board. <coughs> <coughs> the Hebrew writer addresses this thing about maturity in the book of Hebrews. And look what it says now. Concerning this, we have much to say which is hard to explain. <laughs> 
I, I can identify with that as a teacher. And if you're a teacher, you know, there's things you know within the spirit, but it's hard to explain. Since you have become dull, oops, in your spiritual hearing and sluggish, even slowful in achieving spiritual insight. Now, when I read that, who does that Hebrew writer think he is to tell me that? <laughs> well, that's inspired by the Holy Ghost. Let, let, let me say something. If you're really going to grow and mature, you're going to have to learn to take correction. None of us like that. That's part of the program. Can you, does that, um, is that you up there? Is that you, Bob? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> uh, dull? Mm, I, I've been dull sometimes. <laughs> Don't get blown out of the water. Just say, Lord, I know it. Thou knoweth. God always gives grace to the proud. Huh? To what? The humble. So if you're going to grow, you're going to have to learn to humble yourself and receive correction. Let's go to the next verse and see what uh, the Hebrew writer's got to say about these people because God, wanted these pe God wants those people to grow. He wants us to grow and mature. And by the way, I see a lot of growth in all of you. I'm not saying that you're not, you're not uh, mature. I'm saying for you to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. I've got to examine myself. For even though by this time you are to be teaching others. Hmm. You actually need someone to teach you over again the very first principles of God's Word. You have come to need milk, not solid food. <clears throat> I think this might be a little solid food tonight. <laughs> we're going to see how, how we, 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 we're either going to chew it and swallow it or we're going to choke on it. Uh, I, I believe you, but all of us have matured enough now to, to try to understand that this is God through the Hebrew writer talking to the people of God in that day. But does that apply to me personally? Or I think I'd rather just go back in my little shell, pull the shell over, and go tweet, 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 tweet in the shell. I know you're in there. Speak to Daddy. Tweet, tweet, tweet. So you out of the shell and we're moving along pretty good and you know one thing you bite out of the shell you got brothers and sisters and you know what they do to you a lot of times <laughs> how many have ever seen little bitties pecking at one another <laughs> preach it bomb i believe it will <laughs> have you been pecked lately have you pecked somebody lately? <clears throat> my uh, my son-in-law is going to get a uh, went to the doctor and he found out that he had to get an operation on his heart. Okay, and he didn't try to hide that. In fact, he shared it with his wife and he shared it with us. He shared it with everybody. And he didn't get mad at the doctor for telling him that he had a condition that needed to be corrected because if that condition is not corrected, he's out of here. I say this with all my heart as your pastor. Be brave, be strong. When God corrects, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And let me tell you what's going to happen. How many can tell me what's going to happen? And God will lift you up.
There comes a time in your life, and, you, and you'll have these experiences. You may by, be by yourself, or you may be with your mate. Susan, we pray together a lot. And there's certain times, it, it's like, it, it, the Bible talks about communion with God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost. Uh, th this is really what we're all starving for, is that p personal communion with the Spirit of God. Spirit to Spirit. Uh, there'll be times that you have no words. You're just being drawn by the Spirit of God. I don't know if you've experienced it yet or not. Some of you have. It's just that words are not sound. There's no words that you can find to express yourself. It's just, you just want to emerge yourself into the oneness of God. So you're going to have all types of different experiences in your walk with God. And there's times when you'll be full of words and you can pray. And other times you can't even utter a sound and you don't want to utter a sound because words cannot, are not sufficient enough to meet your need. Am I going too far over your head? How many understand a little bit what I'm saying? Okay. And so th there's a time that in, your, in the quietness of, of your moment that you just open to God. And God does the changing. You, you, you might have struggled with this particular thing in your life, and you're sick of it yourself. Everybody's sick of it. You're tired of it. All of a sudden, you don't, you, you don't know when it happened. It could have been at church. It could have been when your prayer life. It, it, all of a sudden, God just drawed you to, to him, and, and all of a sudden, you just feel different. You see things different. The cloud is, is lifted. And you're seeing clearly for the first time how much God really loves you. And that change happens like that. No more striving, no more kicking, no more hollering, no more trying to be first, no more trying to be recognized. That don't matter no more because your need has been met in God. And now God's growing you up as a spirit being, drawing you by his spirit. The Bible says, draw nigh to God, and God will draw nigh to you. And so many times we think intellectually, and, that, and that's involved at times, but, but the drawing is that your inner man <clears throat> breaks out and, and somehow is, it's drawing nigh to God, and God's drawing nigh to you. And that's what you've been looking for, and all of a sudden, you're satisfied. Because all along it was your spirit man that was crying out for Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father. And growth comes, growth comes. Like a tree, you ever, a tree just abides and it grows. And it abides and it grows. And sometimes you'll say, am I really growing? Am I really maturing? Well, you know, you'll be put in situations and, and you'll find out if you really growed a little bit. Because, because that, will, that whatever's in us will manifest if the pressure gets great enough, okay? So some of the pressure that's on us is to, is to help us to grow. But see, God is moving us now individually and as a body of believers forward to mature and grow that, that we can get into a position to reach souls for him and to carry out his will. Now, this church have grow, has grown enough to where we are reaching thousands of people out in the world now. You remember when I said that when I preach or anybody teaches up here, it's not just for us, but it's for the world now. That's a sobering thought that people are hearing us preach the Word of God here, right in here, by the internet, and it goes out across the world. So God is using us in, in, a, in a mighty, mighty way. <clears throat> but getting back to our individual selves, 
we want to be able to grow and mature but only God can cause growth yet we have to cooperate with him now I want to ask you a question how many in here feel that in the last year you've grown let's see your hands all right that's good and that, remember that's a process that's a process that God has us in. And he uses, he uses our mates, he uses the preacher, he uses believers, he uses people to help us to grow and mature. Now, when I first got saved, I had a lot of anger. And if you stepped on my toe, hello, wake up. How many was like that? You know, you shoot first and ask questions later. But I have learned, don't shoot first. Don't shoot at all. I have learned to overcome evil with evil. Huh? Evil with good. Now, if you want to know if you have grown any, let somebody step on your toe and do something you don't like. I mean, love me. <laughs> I'm pushing it, ain't I? Sunday, I said, you know, we just got to quit looking at so much TV. I mean, remember me saying that. Of course, nobody, you heard me, but you ain't changed. I know I have you. But anyway, or have you? So you yeah, have good. You don't have no TV. Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with TV, but there's things on TV. Now, I was watching, I was clicking. I'm clicking. I'm trying to find something worthy to look at. Susan comes. What did the preacher say Sunday? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Was there anything in me? Well, it was, but it's out now. <laughs> I said, honey, I didn't say totally quit looking at it. I said, but we need to. I said, I'm trying to find something on here, because if I find a, something good, I, I record it, where Susan and me can later on look at it, see. So I do monitor uh, what, I, what I look at. But... But I did what I did. I, I put this DVD on this. Man, you're, it was a, this guy named Pastor Bob. He was good, I tell you. I put him on there. <laughs> and, and I think, did I preach that? I preached Jesus, our salvation. What a message. It's on the internet. Get a chance to watch it. It's great. <laughs> and then we watched another one, a Revival. And, uh, but that's what we're doing. Now, see, as you move along, God will change you, you in your everyday situation. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that some of you have been doing the same thing for year after year after year after year. Stop it. Think. Wait a minute. Should I continue that? Should I not? Maybe not do that no more? <clears throat> what, what is something in your life that you need to stop? Think about it. Now, we're not talking about condemnation and guilt here. That's not what we're about here. In this. We're about learning to walk and grow and mature in God, to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil as, as sons and daughters of God. But what is in your life you think that needs to be changed? I'm not talking about banana pudding ice cream now. We're just... Leave that out of the picture. That's not negotiable. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the guy behind you, okay? <laughs> give me, somebody give me one thing. Be brave, be strong. How about going to bed too late? All right, what, what you got? Going to bed too late. All right, going to bed too late. <laughs> The next morning. No, I didn't Is that you up early? Huh? So why would you why would you want to not why would you want to not you don't think you get enough rest? 
You, is, that, is that a negative in your life? You feel like that's working against you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Okay. Well, you were honest. You, you figured that, that's, and that's the same way with Susan and me. You know, so many times I feel better about 10 and 11 o'clock. <laughs> Put on the coffee pot, cook on some eggs. I'm ready to roll. <laughs> but the next morning, oh, God. Why did I go to bed last night? <laughs> How many is like that? You know, there's one back there. I see one of our elders. He's back there. All right, church. Now the whole thing is, I want you to see that God is bringing us to a place to reign and rule. Now, <clears throat> I want to jump to another scripture, and that's Romans five seventeen. Okay, here we go. The time is going by fast, and I got to get some positive stuff in here. Just turn to um, Romans five seventeen. Remember, we want to be able to control things in our little world first. There's good control and bad control, by the way. We're not to control nobody. We're to control ourselves. Okay, that's the person we're to control. For, for if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reign through that one, much more surely, now I like that, much more surely, uh, will those who receive God's overflowing grace, now who is that? Identify the person that has received the overflowing grace. That's us, okay? So we've got this overflowing grace, which is unmerited favor, and we've got this free gift of righteousness. Everybody say, I'm righteous. I'm righteous. Okay. I didn't say you're, all of our actions was righteous, but we are considered righteous as far as God's concerned. It's a gift. I want you to see that. The free gift. Everybody say gift. Okay. If I gave you a gift of a million dollars, would you reject it? No. You're glad to receive it. Yeah. That's worth more than a million dollars. That, that righteousness of the Lord is. So you've got to see yourself now as a son of God, as righteous in the, in the sight of God. And it's a free gift of righteousness. Notice this, putting them into right standing with himself. Reign, now notice this, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. So we break out of our little shell, we establish a life, and we're reigning and ruling in our lives, in our family's lives, and we're reigning and ruling, and God has given us the free gift of righteousness to do that, and the abundance of grace, unmerited favor, to reign in life through Christ Jesus. All right. Now, mark that down. Now, the first place, if you're going to be, if you're going to be somebody that's going to reign and rule, you're going to have to watch your thinking. All day now, what have you been thinking? So you got to, when you come to church, you've got to see me in the message. How many wants to see me in the message? Not me, but you want to see yourself, right? Okay, you want to see you, and I want to see me. We want to see me in the message. How are you doing in your thinking? Isn't that the big job right there? Ruling and reigning as kings first, We've got to learn to rule and reign in this life of ours and right up here in our mind because that's where the devil attacks, right there in your mind. Now, how many can tell me what thoughts will produce? Anybody else? Thoughts produce what? Attitudes. Now, if you, if you examine yourself now, you don't have to have the Lord hit you in the head with a two by four. Just stop and say, what have I been thinking about this person? Have I been thinking good thoughts about that person? Have I been thinking good thoughts about myself? Mm -hmm. 
because the, the, you, the thoughts that you think are going to form your attitude about yourself. And if you think bad, say one of the things the devil tries to do is to make you think you're a failure. Are you out there, church? Everybody say, I'm not a failure. I'm a child of God. I've been given the gift of righteousness. I reign in this life through Christ Jesus, my Lord. Now, now you're growing. You're beginning to understand, oh, I'm out of my shell. I like it better in there, but I'm out now. And I better learn how to walk and reign as kings because God has given me that which I need to reign and rule in this life as a king. Okay, that, that doesn't mean you're going to do everything right all the time. Wouldn't that be wonderful? It, it don't work that way. But as you grow and mature, you think before you put your hand in somebody else's face. Because they may have a bigger bat than you got. How many don't know about? <laughs> you see? So, so you learn to think good thoughts. Everybody say think. think. Now, I know that's a new word for some folks. <laughs> but think on that which is ugly. And, no. huh? Why? No. Think on that which is what? Good. good. Honest. Why? Because it, you're forming your attitude. Now, here's the next one. If you've been thinking bad thoughts and you have formed a bad attitude, tell me what type of condition is your emotion? Hmm? Bad. You got negative emotions. Oh, man. If I could find somebody to express all of this anger I got, Oh, there's Pastor Bob. Let me see if I can't work on him. <laughs> the, usually the, the, the person that's the closest to you will get the... <laughs> that don't shout me down, church. You know I'm talking truth. See, we're talking about not growing, and, you know, and see, if somebody don't bring our attention to these things, we, the enemy has a way of what you call deception, and, and you're thinking bad thoughts about this person, about that person. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. You think you're getting away with it, but you are poisoning, you are killing yourself and everybody around you. So as a man stinketh, so is, I mean, so as a man thinketh, isn't that right? Now, I'm talking, but check yourself. Check yourself this day. What was your thoughts on? The chances are that's your attitude for the moment, and that's probably your feelings for the moment. And then it goes out into activity. You begin to act it out. I have people sometimes come to me and say, well, you know, my, my kid, you know, I, I said, listen, let me tell you how a, ki a kid spells love. Let me tell you how action. Play ball with them. How many's got a Frisbee? I love the Frisbee. There you go, Charles. Jump rope. Keep your jump rope. Some of you old women need to get a jumping. <laughs> Mind your mouth, Bob. I'm trying. <clears throat> There's so many, but, but we are in a generation today. Take that cell phone. Be, now be careful, Bob. You'll hurt somebody's feelings. Take that cell phone, put it in your pocket. Forget about it. I'm off duty for 24 hours. Bye. <laughs> and start playing with your kid. Preach it, Bob. I believe it will. <laughs> you know what sometimes I tell Susan? Honey, get over here on this couch. And let's just sit here. 
and see what happens. Come on, church, don't shout me down. Huh? Come on. Come on. Your marriage is going to fall apart if you don't know how to keep it together. Since he's been married for 62 years, we must know something. If we don't know nothing by now, we in bad shape, man. And we still in love. Uh, I ain't going that way. I could go that way. I ain't going that way. Okay. <clears throat> but what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. You follow me? Amen. So there's a lot to learn. See, but we've got to realize that other people, I remember when I was 17 years old, and I, I don't know why when you're a teenager you want to spend all night out. out. How many ever done that? Somehow that was a big thing. All night out, you know, just driving around. <clears throat> looking, didn't know what we was looking for. We was looking. <laughs> and I come in at 7 o'clock in the morning, Dad and Mom's, you know, fixing breakfast. And, and Dad was pretty calm. I was 17, and if he'd have said too much to me, and then we'd have been tangling, so he knew that. So <laughs> if you're going to tell your kids anything, tell them why they're young, because when they get up to a certain age, you know. Might be a, you, it might be a different ball game and you might be at the ball. Anyway, <laughs> he said, son, you know, could you, could you come in earlier? You, 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 your mom and me, we worried about you. And the light went on in my mind and I thought, I thought I was the only one in the world. Gosh, you mean I got to think on, uh, about others and their feelings? Oh boy, boy, wasn't that gross? Huh? See, that's growth. A lot of Christian people ain't, ain't got that growth yet. They, they think they're the only one in the world. No, they're, 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 there's other folks. Did you know I'm your pastor and I love you? You, you know what? I don't see you. Sometimes I, I get a little concerned because I love you. I say, oh boy, the devil's been working for sure. <laughs> I ain't going that way. But say, everybody say, I want to grow. I'm in a process. I am learning to receive correction. And I am learning if I do correct myself, I'll be easy on myself. Yeah. But if when I'm correcting somebody else, I'll be easy on, I'll be easy on them too. All right. Do unto others as you would have. Them. Okay. All right. You know that. So. God wants us to grow up and everything and mature because he's got some plans for us to use all of us to bring many souls into the kingdom of God. And God has so much love that he just wants all these children. And he's got a lot of them. And he's trying to get them to grow and mature. And I just want to say, I thank God for the maturity that I see in you folks. Don't you see maturity in one another? Don't you see maturity in one another? Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna say that again. Don't you see maturity in one another? Yes. <laughs> Whoa! You see that, child? Yeah. Take that. I do too. I do too. And and I'm proud of you. But see, that's the that's God's desire. And you know, sometimes I think, God, what can I do to grow up more faster? You know, when we were young, we'd, I don't know if, what y'all had around the house, but we had these marks. You know, you started way down here, and you marked the wall, you know, and, 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 it kind of, and look at there, look how Bob, look at Bob, how much you've grown, son. Oh, boy, look at that. Oh, yippee dippy doo. You know, another year, I'll just grow a little bit, you know. You know right, yes. Just marks on the wall. We all want to grow, and God wants us to grow. And that's what God wants all of us to realize. Now I'm going to turn to another scripture, and we'll close on this one. There's a lot we can say. Uh, one more thing before we go to that other scripture. I want you to check, check you here. You, okay. Look what we have down there. There's, there's five things there. Knowing what God has done for us. When you, screen, when you read the scriptures... You get into the Word of God, and we learn what God has done for us. Only God can do it for us. Only God can save us. Only God can give us new birth, and He's done that. 
knowing what God wants to do in us. Now, not many Christians understand. They know they need to change, but they don't know how to go about changing. And only God can change you. Are you listening? Say, God, God. change me. Change. Ooh, he heard you. Because God always works on the inside. You were born again on the inside. He's going to change you on the inside. And it will manifest itself on the outside of you. Now notice the next thing. Knowing what God wants to do through us. So many times we figure, well, I'll go out and do this. I'll go out and do that. Well, go ahead. Down the road, uh, you will find out that it ain't going to work out too good. But now when God sends you out, when he does that work in you, where he can do something through you, it's God. Susan was so excited today. Uh, when we go out, we give tracts everywhere we go. We have a great time giving out tracts, the Word of God. And, and, and uh, she was going to give this young man one, but she passed, and God spoke to her. She said, go back and give that young man one of those tracts. So she turned around, and she, and she came up and says, have you had your vitamin pills today? And, and he said, well, I took two. I said, well, here's some, here's some vitamin pills that, that will last you throughout eternity. And he took it and said, oh, thank you. But see, God spoke to her. She said, honey, God's voice is so awesome. I said, I know, I know. She told, she'll probably share that with you, uh, with the kind. She said, honey, his voice is so wonderful. I said, no, I know it, darling. It's wonderful. And she's, you know, it's like, ah. Oh. Now, she's heard God's voice before. But see, when God tells you to do something, that's God doing something through her. And it is the most rewarding thing in the world. Now, notice this. Now, we come into the picture knowing God's part is one, and then knowing what our part is. So we have a part when God tells us to do something, uh, we, we do it. Now, let's go. We've got 10 minutes, and I want to finish it up. And not finish it up. You never finish it. But I want to turn to uh, Ephesians chapter um, 3. I'm sorry. I'm turning to it right now. Uh, Ephesians 4, 11. Okay, 4, 11. 4, 11. All right, here we go. Now, God has put certain people in the body of Christ to help us to grow and mature. And his gifts were varied. He himself appointed and gave, gave men to us. All right, so God has given men to all of us. I'm the pastor. God has given me to you to teach and to instruct and to help you in your Christian walk. He's given other men of God in the body of Christ to do the same. So we are to be submissive to them and not be rebellious. And let me say this, anybody that tells you to do something, that's in, they're in authority and they tell you to do something contrary to the word of God, you don't have to do it. But you can still have a kind, gentle spirit and you don't have to be rebellious. You just simply say, I could not do that because it says here in God's word. How many understand that? Okay, that's, that's, our, that's your safety. And, and some of them are prophets and, and evangelists and uh, preachers and, and uh, missionaries and pastors and shepherds and, uh, uh, and, uh, of his flock and teachers. So these, these men are called gifts and have been put into the body of Christ to help us grow and mature. All right, look at the next verse now. Let's move on down the line here. Here we go. His, now his intention was, now we stop. What was his attention? What was his reason for given, putting those men in the body of Christ. What was it? His intention was the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints. Okay? So I'm here to equip and perfect you. Okay? That's my part. Now, God does the changing, but as I preach and teach, and sometimes I'll preach and teach things that you won't like to hear, but you need to hear it. Okay? Because that's my job, see? Nothing personal. 
All right, his consecrated people, that's what we are. We are God's consecrated people, that they should do the work ministering towards building up Christ's body, the church. Now, that's important to understand. My job is to equip, perfect the saints of God, that you, the believers, will do the work ministering towards building up the body of the church. Everybody got that? Very important. So all of God's people are to do that. Now let's go to the next verse. That it might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the full and adequate knowledge of the Son of God that we might arrive at really mature manhood. Now, Parents, you have children. What is your desire for those kids? To grow and mature and learn how to put their shoes on backwards. <laughs> I was sitting in church years ago back in the 50s and this little boy was putting his shoes on. He was putting them on his ears. He took his shoes off and hung them on his ears. Of course, that just, you know, made the night. We all just had a great time laughing and thought that we thought that was really something. But if he's 21 years old and he's doing that, oh, <laughs> it ain't so funny anymore. <laughs> okay, so, so we, we, we're just not down here wandering around and meeting and coming to church and what another day of church. What, no, God's intention is that we grow mature in the manhood. And then when you go back to the job, you'll know how to witness, you'll know how to share Christ with people, you'll know how to help them in their problems, you'll know the Word of God, because all of us has matured into manhood. I tell you, as you read into the Scriptures, notice this, the uh, completeness of personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection. We know God's got to do it. Because we sure ain't going to be able to do it. Is that right? So your faith is going to go into God, the Holy Spirit, to perfect us. Yes, I have my part. You have your part. But God is perfecting us to into that complete perfection of Jesus Christ. Wow. So don't give up. Put your faith in God that he's doing that work in you and he'll use people ain't gonna need to get mad at people sometimes they'll be well we won't go that way tonight uh, look, look at what uh, the measure of the statue of the fullness of the Christ and the completeness found in him that's where we're heading wow when I look at I used to read that I said God Ain't no way. No. With God, all things are possible. My faith is in him to perfect me into the very image of his only begotten son. He's able to do it, and he will do it. Now let's read on a bit more. I've got five minutes. We'll let you go. All right, next verse. So then we may no longer be children, now notice this, tossed like ships to and fro between change gusts of teaching and wavering with every changing wind of doctrine, the prey of the cunning and cleverness of unscrupulous men, gamblers engaged in every shifting form of trickery in inventing error to mislead. In other words, if we don't mature, this is what's going to happen to the church. We'll go into total deception. So it is important in God's calendar and purposes that we grow, especially in these last days, because the Bible says many shall depart from the faith. Now you got to be you got to be in this building before you can depart from it. 
And today there are so many Christians departing the faith because they've never been able to grow and mature and follow instructions that those that God has put in charge of them to help them to grow and mature, they weren't willing to change and they went their own way and it always leads to deception. So it is important that we grow and it's important that our children grow and mature in the things of God. Go to the next verse. So, <clears throat> Rather, let our lives lovely express truth in all things. Speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly, enfolded in love. Let us grow up. Everybody say, grow up. up. In every way and in all things into him who is the head, even Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Okay. Now, let's stop for a moment. Let's evaluate our own lives. How will we do it, saints? From one to ten. I would say that in many things, as I look at this body of believers, we've grown in a lot of areas. And I'm very thankful for that. There are certain individuals that need to and, and you'll always have that. And we have to be patient with people. They don't fully understand that God has some purposes. And that is to have children to grow up to carry on his will and his work. So the Bible says we've been redeemed. We've been bought back and that we belong to him. And therefore we don't belong to ourselves. Now that doesn't sound too exciting, but it is exciting because if we belong to ourselves, we'll go astray. But when we belong to him, he has a way of guiding us and leading us and maturing us, and that's what he's doing. Getting a, bio, a, a body of believers that love one another, that take care of one another, and are willing to share the gospel with other people. One of the greatest blessings you'll ever have is to be used by the Holy Spirit to win one person to Christ. We had a young lady back there. It's okay if I shared what you shared with me, Lisa, about giving that track. Remember? Okay. Lisa came to me. She was so excited. She said, I, I gave a track to somebody. Now that, that excited me. I should give a track to somebody. What a big deal, you know. I've been doing it for 60 years, you know. I could rejoice with her. And when God uses you to win a soul to the Lord Jesus Christ, let me tell you, the angels in heaven are jumping and a-jiving over one lost soul. So, we have grown, we have matured, and I say, I think it's time, and, and, I, and I, I, I'd like to see the hands of people that, that are really giving out tracts. Would you mind, if, you, if you're not giving out tracts, I mean, how many in here gives out tracts? Let me see your hands. Okay, look at the hands, all right, that's good. Now, if you're not, we're not scolding you, but see, now, we, see, we're growing. We want to grow. You can track me down. If I go to California, you can track me down. <laughs> Just stop where I stop, and you say, Bob's been here, there's, or Susan's been here, there's a track. Just track me down by following the tracks. You say, what's so powerful about that? The Word of God. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. No sowing, no, there's no reaping. Somebody has got to be willing to sow the seed. Then somebody will come along and water it, but God gets the increase. That little track there. Son, have you had your vitamins today? I have not. You got them now. Thanks. Now, that's, that's all you've got to say. 
Now, now I have a few other things I say, you know. I say, I got a question for you, buddy. Yeah, go ahead. If, that, if that's what you want to do, you do it. Be like the prophet. Eat the word of God. It might be sour. Yeah, there you go. Eat it. How would you hide in the desert? <laughs> I had Susan, Susan is having so much fun. She said, honey, I had one person. You got, can you, can you got six of them for me? She wanted six of, the, of, of the, her vitamins. So Susan's are getting so excited about just sowing the word. It's, it brings life to you. Now you're growing. Now you're maturing. And then one day somebody says, I don't care. I don't want it. And you say, you take your shoe off and you hit them in the head. <laughs> <laughs> don't it won't bother you that's okay there's millions of them out there that will so what am i saying here tonight i want to charge everyone and let's grow a little bit now and begin to break out of the shell our little safety zone and reach out and begin to minister to the world that's what god wants us to do who's going to be brave Who's going to be strong? Uh, say, I'm brave. I'm strong. Man, I'm going to get the gospel out. Now, we're all doing that through the internet. When I give something out, it's all of us together because we are a group. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to encourage and realize where God is bringing us to that place of maturity where we'll give out the word of God. And I'm telling you, it'll do more for you than you ever thought powerful and I've been doing it for 60 years I started out giving out the word of God thousands and upon thousands of tracks over the years and, 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 and I ain't going to slow up until God calls me home are we ready are we going to do it make that commitment and you can reach over there and say here's that good bro be brave, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with you. Love you. God bless you. Hope you've grown a little bit tonight. Amen.